The blend seems stable. Time to go and find Harriet in the sewers. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? How are conditions in Whitechapel at the moment? I always thought it was my role to reveal what really happens in these forgotten parts of London. And you're not sure anymore? Empty coffins. Cannibalism. Walking dead. I'm trying to report the truth about what's going on, but no one believes it anymore. Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir.
Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? If you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time, until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Good evening, Christian. Change your... Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. I am shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Good evening, Mr. Whittaker. It's Father Whittaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences, and most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know, blinded by science as I am? But you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. I am. But the answers I seek are based on facts, not superstition. Tell me, Tobias, what exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. Fire is just the instinctive answer of a caveman facing something he does not understand. This is the 20th century. Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad and dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. A small-time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son, if you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool? Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. I have found Samuel, your disciple. I am afraid I have bad news. I already expected the worst. He should already have come back. He is dead, isn't he? Yes, he is now. The epidemic took him. Samuel steadily made donations to our cause. He would have rewarded you himself if you'd found me in that awful cemetery. Please accept this money. Why did you send Samuel to the cemetery, Tobias? What did you see there? I sent him on a vision. A dream of a dreadful and laughing queen covered with blood. Sleeping with the dead and feeding on the fear of the dying. A laughing queen dressed in blood. Tell me more. This epidemic is her feast, the announcement of her return. 
Against her, science is no more than a child's toy. But who is she? She is the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. She is Babylon, drunk on the blood of the saints. Don't you fear getting sick yourself? Faith gives me all I need, my son. If I must fall, then so be it. No doubt your faith will prevail, but let me give you some extra protection against the devil's work. Medicine. Blessed be your generosity, my son. I have had enough for tonight. Goodbye. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. But I don't feel like I should. I will see you later. I'll leave you alone, sir. Good evening. And good evening to you. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Yes, the enjoyable silence of the grave. You have a unique perspective on the situation, I must admit. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? 
Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. I'll leave you alone, sir. Hello again, miss. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Hello, Camellia. How are you, partner? Come on, girl. Smile. Don't you know Dorothy and I have an agreement? We're on the same side. No? All right then, as you wish. Very well. Goodbye then.
right. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Watch out for that Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. What is your opinion of Aloysius Dawson? All I know is my mother is very disappointed in you right now. Really, Dr. Reed? You made this disgusting man your progeny? Do you know why Lady Ashbury chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price? Loneliness. The necessary masquerade. Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place,